So we've got a new model out from Salesforce, and this is a pretty interesting model. This is basically trying to be a similar style to the Llama 7 billion model, except one of the big things that they've done here is they've made the sequence length or the context window, instead of 2K like Llama, they've taken it right out to 8K. So if we look at this, we can see that this model is called XGen. Uh, it's from Salesforce. So Salesforce actually has a good reputation for making models and making them open source. Most recently with a lot of their vision stuff like Blip and Blip2, but even a long way back with language models, Salesforce released Control, which was basically a model that was bigger than GPT-2 when OpenAI was saying that GPT-2 was so big and so dangerous that they couldn't dare release it. Salesforce back then under the leadership of Richard Socha decided, well, we can actually release a model that's bigger and show people that it's not as dangerous as people think. And that certainly was a good contribution to the community that allowed people to actually play around with one of these, what back then was a big model at 1.6 billion uh, parameters. Anyway, their new model is a 7 billion parameter model with an 8K context window in here. It's been trained for 1.5 trillion tokens. And the really good thing is that this is basically just Apache 2 license, so you can do with it what you want. Now they've released a few different models here. So they've released their base model, which they've got in both 4K and 8K versions. And then they've also released an instruct model. If we come in and have a look on the Hugging Face Hub, we can see that they've got the, the 4K base, the 8K base, and then the 8K instruction model. The one I'm going to be looking at today is the 8K instruction model, but I'll give some warnings before I actually go into it and explain a few things why as well. So if we come in here and we look at the base model, we can see that the license on this is actually uh, Apache 2, meaning that you can use it for commercial things and you don't need to worry about any of the issues that you would have with the 7 billion Llama model. That said, there are a number of open source Llama models now with things like Open Llama, with the Falcon 7B. There is a number of these things out. One of the things that sets this one apart is one that it's trained on 1.5 trillion tokens. And the other thing being that it's got this 8K version where you've got this context window that goes right up to 8,000 tokens, which is pretty amazing for a model this size. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the things in here that they basically talk about. So it does seem that one of the uses that they're aiming this for is summarization of text. Uh, and they mentioned that the long sequences, that becomes really important for things like summarization, writing text, and predicting protein sequences. That one I have no experience with, so I'm not sure about. But it's interesting to look at these. So these are the, the three models that they've actually released. We've got the 4K base, which is basically trained on 1.2 trillion tokens, this 8 K1 trained on 1.5 trillion tokens. Now, the other thing too we should mention is that the 8K context window here is not done with any of the tricks for extending a context window. It's basically just done with a dense attention mechanism there. So this can be both good and bad. It's certainly good in that finally we've got something that's actually trained to do this. The challenge is that it probably can't be extended as easily as some of the MPT models ones where you can basically just dial it out a bit further and stuff. And you may also find that this is going to be using up a, a lot more memory when you use it with that large context window going forward. So let's look at the pre-training that they've done. They've made use of the Red Pajama data set. This has been a huge contribution to the community, the Red Pajama data set. Lots of people are using it now. It's becoming a sort of de facto standard, I noticed, for a lot of things. They've also made this multilingual, whereas MPT is English only. Now we've got a multilingual model. Unfortunately, it's only 22 languages. There are a number of sort of key languages that are perhaps missing, but even that is more than the original Llama models started out with. They also mentioned in their second stage of pre-training that they actually did you know, pre-training for code generation. Although I must say, looking at the stats later on, it doesn't seem that this is the kind of model you would pick for doing code generation. My guess is this is more aimed at trying to get something that would be useful for reasoning tasks for things like that. So interestingly, this was trained on TPUs and not GPUs. They've used TPU version four and they've used their own uh, in-house library, Jaxforma, for training this. 
So just quickly, this is Jack's former. This is the Salesforce library that they've got. Now, I, I don't know if this is, this seems to be an older version. So my guess is that maybe internally they have a, a more recent version for this that they've used to do the training. All right. So if we look at the, the standard sort of benchmarks, we can see where this models are coming in. And so they've basically done a number of MMLU benchmarks in here. And you can see at the sort of five shot, this is coming in quite a lot higher than models like Falcon 7 and MPT7B here, as well as a lot of the other open source models in here. At zero shot, it's also got quite a substantial bump over some of these. Now, it doesn't seem to do as well on the Hella Swag dataset, which it seems like Llama is definitely beating it, Falcon is beating it, and MPT7B is beating it. So that, that's kind of an interesting to, thing to see. But on the MMLU, it, it's, you know, it's beating the other open source ones quite cl clearly and getting close to the Llama 7B in here. And then if we look at the code generation stats, we can see that, okay, it seems to be doing better than Llama, but it's not as good as the MPT7B, which even that I wouldn't consider to be a great coding model. It's probably more to try and get it to do some of the reasoning kind of tasks and stuff. They also have some benchmarks on long sequences, which is interesting because you don't see these benchmarked as much. And I don't really know these benchmarks that well either. So it, it does seem like that they're saying that for doing sort of long sequences, this is doing a, a lot better than Falcon and a lot better than MPT7 in here. Again, we don't know, is there a plan to actually release bigger models from Salesforce, or is this sort of just a one-off test to see what they, they could do uh, with this kind of thing? You see, for example, when they basically benchmark the summarization, it, it seems like they're doing better than the, the other models for this. So the model that I'm going to look at is this XGen instruct model. Uh, so this is basically a supervised fine tuning on public domain instruction data. So this is basically the Databricks Dolly data set, the Open Assistant data set, and the, the Bayes data set here. So these are not distilled from GPT-4. So you will notice, my guess is when we look at the, the model in the code, we're going to see that it's probably not getting as great a result as things like the wizard model, like the other model, mostly because they're using these data sets rather than going for training on the evil instruct data set or one of the ones that are distilled from uh, GPT-4. So it will be interesting to see how this base model does when it's fine-tuned on some of those better distilled data sets, uh, having a look at it. Anyway, let's jump into the code and have a look at how this model does. All right, let's have a look at the XGen 7B 8K instruct model from Salesforce. So. I've basically brought this in 16 bit. I've put the code in here. If you want to do it in eight bit, I think in eight bit, it will fit on a T4 GPU. You can try that out and, and see for yourself. So basically I've just brought this in. They've got the sort of stock standard way of doing an instruct model here. And I've tried it out with some things and I've then basically put together some functions for handling the prompt, for handling the generation and gone straight into our normal sort of questions. So looking at this, it's not a bad model. It's reasonably quick, although I think this also could be that I've just gotten so used to the MPT-30B, which is also a pretty quick model, for, but it's you know obviously four times the size uh, of this one. The thing I will, will say, just looking it through these, there are some weird things like this, where uh, you ask it, what is the capital of England? And the end of sentence text doesn't seem to be kicking in there. And so it just keeps generating a whole bunch of uh, stuff there. I'm not sure exactly, you know, why it can get some things like that, uh, not so good. And then it can do an email to Sam Altman and, and do it quite nicely uh, and basically address uh, a number of issues and stuff in this and finish exactly with the right end of sentence token, et cetera. We do have some of the whole, you know, I am an AI and I do not have personal preferences or opinions. I guess this is again, just from the data sets that they've trained. And I would say that this model itself is just heavily influenced by the data that they've fine tuned on. And none of that is the distilled data from the GPT-4, from what I can see. So that really affects the quality of the outputs here as well. There are some strange things where it basically just doesn't generate an output. 
for it. The reasoning, it doesn't do a great job in here, both on the you know, number of apples question and also on the haiku question, it's not doing so great. But for other things, it's generally doing quite okay. The converting the following to JSON, again, it's not getting this right. I'm not sure, for example, though, if the other 7B, I've forgotten now whether the other 7B models actually do get this one right. Certainly the MPT30 was getting this right, was getting the apples question right. I think it got the Kaiku one wrong. But anyway, you can have a play with these yourself. You'll see that the yeah, number of them, it just doesn't seem to generate stuff out. Where it does shine though, is where if you put in an article and you ask it to do a summarization, it can do summarizations here. So this is something worth playing around with and both normal summarizations and bullet point summarizations. It certainly seems to understand what that is. It's probably worth experimenting with fact extraction and some of the other things like that. My guess though, is that some people are going to train this up on the distilled GPT-4 data sets, and we might see a X-Gen wizard or something like that come pretty soon which is probably going to shine a lot better than this. You only then have the issues about whether you're legally allowed to use a distilled data set for training a model or not, which I'm not going to go into here. Anyway, overall, this is definitely an interesting model to check out. It's really nice that Salesforce have done this. I, I hope very much that they go on to make a 13 or a 30 or, or a bigger model as well and release that. That certainly it would be interesting and would shake things up. Like I mentioned, they definitely have a strong team for doing deep learning and for doing large language models, going right back to the original control model many years ago now. So it's great to see them getting involved in this sort of llama game that we've had over the past few months and contributing something that people can actually use for commercial use in this. Anyway, as always, if you've got questions, uh, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.